Laura, I got to say, too, thanks for letting me choose the tea. I was <laughs> uh, joking with Laura and Greg before we started recording. I didn't know that there were different varieties of tea. And when I begged Laura to be a guest on the show, um, she said, yeah, sure. What kind of tea do you like? And I'm like, I don't know. Just give me the tea. Um, and so <laughs> thankfully, Laura, you gave me a list and I was like, oh, wow, there's like black tea, green tea. I think you said something like floral. And I'm like, yeah. what? all of that. And then I see mint and I'm more of a, a mint. Like I knew right away. Like I never knew that that was the kind of tea that I, that I kind of lean toward. Yeah. I mean, so with the kinds of tea that there are, you can have tea that actually has the tea plant leaves in it. The tea plant leaves can be processed differently. And that's how you get uh, black tea versus green tea versus matcha versus white tea. Wait, so the the processing is yeah. what, it's not the tea leaves themselves? Correct. So the amount of oxidation that is allowed to happen as the tea leaves dry makes the tea darker and darker. So if they pick tea leaves and dry them out, but don't let them oxidize, that's white tea. It's got a real delicate flavor. And then if they let it oxidize just a little, then it becomes green tea and it has a little more flavor. And then if you have um, a little more oxidation, then you end up with um, uh, like an orange pico type variety of tea, like a Lipton that you might be used to. And then if you oxidize it even more, it becomes black tea. Wow. And then, then there's other herbal components that can yeah. be added to it or in place of the tea leaves. And now that you say it, like I read all of those ingredients and not one of them was a tea leaf. It's like, oh yeah, that's interesting. But I have two things I want to say. One's an observation and the other is a question. I'll start with the observation. You just went through explaining how tea um, is oxidized and all that stuff. Have you figured out for your show, how to relate the way tea is made to the actual spilling of tea, the news that you're about to drop. So you label, hey, we got some green tea today for you. We got some <laughs> black tea. It's all that stuff. Like it's been, it's been, uh, what do you say, oxidizing long or whatever. And oh, you know, so like the tea's a little like not so fresh. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know if today's tea that we're going to talk about. It's kind of actually stale tea because it's from going to be from last week talking about lockdown browser. Um, <laughs> and so like, what, what is that? Is that like weeks old? Is that Earl Grey? Because is it Earl Grey real bitter and, and gross, Greg? Uh, oh, so then you can get even, <laughs> even more oxidation can happen beyond black tea. There is a type of tea that is aged often in caves the way cheese can be aged called puer tea who air yeah oh. <laughs> and wow. so if it's really stale news it might be puer tea <laughs> yeah. the the puer tea is not for everybody yeah <laughs> it's i don't i've never heard of it i, I couldn't it, even know how to spell that it has a flavor kind of unto itself and yeah. some people really enjoy it and some people really don't like it just like a really strong cheese right you know yeah. some people might like that and and others might not and so i think you know we've we've had we have some pu'er tea i have some at home my my wife and i and you know we drink all different kinds of tea but some of the pu'ers we end up really not liking because it's just got too strong of a flavor almost it can almost lean towards a fishy flavor wow but not always not always there's a, a chinese we've seen that happen though with with some of them that we've gotten and we were surprised because you know we had gotten a batch of smith tea that was a pu'er and the one batch we really liked and then the next time we got it it was like the flavor is very different this time. And mm. so it can be the tea, maybe the sourcing, the processing, again, 
a variety of things go into it, but. See, there's a, there's a tradition of Chinese pu'er tea where they, uh, they hollow out an orange, like a little mandarin orange, mm -hmm. and they pack that mandarin orange peel full of tea leaves until they can't shove any more in. Then they sew the, the top back on of the orange peel and they let that ferment until the orange is dried out. And it gives the tea all the oils that were in the orange peel. They, they get sucked into the tea leaves as they dry out further. And it makes something absolutely delightful and not fishy at all. Right. That sounds amazing. See, I right. would love to try that. I haven't I haven't had that tea. It's one of those things that's pretty expensive. So I would imagine you've had it once. Um, I got it as a gift from my sister-in-law and, oh, it was so lovely. It now was I'm going to have to look for that. Yeah. Because you had to like open the orange up even and like take the tea out of the orange to, to use it. And wow. I think that's what had um, orange in it. Do you, do you think that's what Gallagher's uses in their iced tea? <laughs> <laughs> so that was the second thing I wanted to bring up. Because I just asked my wife last night. I had a glass of it, and I said, "What is in this Gallagher's iced tea that is so good? It like tastes like tea, but like it also doesn't taste like tea. Is that just the sugar? Sugar, <laughs> probably lemon. <laughs> sugar and flavorings, and yeah. I mean they add all kinds of things to it. And there are many teas that are flavored teas and have." different oh, yeah. spices and all kinds of different things in them i mean so the variety of tea is amazing out there and the number of really good tea companies honestly there are a lot of them and uh you can you know the world of tea is is something to explore laura and i both share the the love of tea, I think. And so yeah. that's one of the we both love tea, but I've noticed that the Venn diagram of tea I like and tea you like, it has an overlap, but there's a lot that you like that I would not, and vice versa. Yeah. Because <laughs> I my for example, my favorite tea that I have at home is a birthday cake flavored tea. Ah. I don't see that being a thing that Greg would like. <laughs> to me, those those two flavors are so distinct they don't belong together but i have a feeling it's do you remember when they introduced um uh cronuts where yes. you have like the the <laughs> bacon croissant and a donut all made and it's like no and and then like you put peanut butter on it it's like this is awful and then you take a bite and you're like this might be the best thing i've ever eaten in my life <laughs> <laughs> tea can be like that where yeah. you look yeah. at something and you just say you know, you might initially kind of have this reaction, uh, you know, like that's not going to be any good. And sometimes, amazingly, you know, it really turns out to be a good tea. And you, you were talking about Earl Grey earlier, and one of the yeah. you know, primary flavor ingredients in Earl Grey is bergamot, oil of bergamot often. And that has its own distinctive flavor that adds to the Earl Grey. So all Earl Greys have some bergamot in them. And it's what gives it its kind of distinctive Earl Grey flavor. Not that some other teas don't have a little bit of bergamot in them. But, but it's kind of, you know, in any traditional Earl Grey tea... It's one of the sort of classic pieces of the flavor. You know, one of the things about herbals, a lot of herbal teas are light, not all of them. I mean, some of the herbal teas that, that you might like, Adam, I would think, would be ones that are rooibos based. So these red teas, they call them red, you know, the rooibos yeah. has sort of that more strength to it like the you know you know i think i think for an herbal tea so not a black tea or anything but for an herbal tea a rooibos tea would be something 
that you might like. There's a peppermint rooibos that that we drink sometimes, and we often add a little bit of milk to it. Now it's got mint, but the rooibos really adds a lot of body to the tea. Yeah. And I I think rooibos has an almost mapley flavor to my palate mm. on its own, so it can make whatever other ingredients you've put with it taste a little sweeter. And that's that birthday cake tea that I like is a rooibos and then they put vanilla flavoring and they actually do put rainbow sprinkles in with the tea. So <laughs> you don't have to add sugar, it's already got sugar. Yeah. yeah. It that's tastes cool. like maple syrup and birthday cake, but like in a way that goes together, not like a maple cookie, I guess yeah. is what it tastes like. Yeah. Well, well rooibos is kind of the red velvet of, of tea. Yeah. <laughs> I like that comparison. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you think flavors that would go good with pancakes or red velvet cake, that those are the things that would go well with rooibos, I yeah. think. You know, we make our own chamomile mint sort of mix in the evening often and i buy these chamomile we get these chamomile flowers that are just amazing <laughs> we, we use that and then i usually use the spearmint peppermint on top of it and i bag it i mean i make a bag and put it and steep it and that really brings out you know both the chamomile and mint flavor really comes together nicely There was another one that was actually like a bug where you could get caught in a loop if you didn't have on Chrome, if you didn't have, because uh, because on a Chromebook, Lockdown Browser is not a program, it's a Chrome extension. And so if you didn't have in your settings set up that, to allow like pop-ups from third parties, like if you had cookies turned off, you could get caught in a loop that you had to like literally shut down your Chromebook in order to close the loop and start it back up.